worked in Denton, Texas. And he was responsible for all the aspects of the district's website and related training. So without further delay, Jeff, the mic is all yours. Well, thank you, Deborah. It's a pleasure to be here today and to uh, talk to you about Minibase, one of the tools that's part of your Centricity 2 package. Um, included in the overall uh, design of your website, many times people will need a way to, to find information that's uh, more than just a static table or uh, just a, a list of information. And to do that, it, it's nice to have that search feature within that set of, of content. So what I'd like to do today is to give you some client examples of how uh, our, our people are using the Minibase tool and uh, use that as a springboard to give you some, some creative ideas on how you might use it at your district. Then at the end, I'll go into the site manager and show you how you can access the information, uh, be able to set up a mini base, and configure it to best meet your needs. This really isn't intended to be a full training. If you do need additional training, uh, you can certainly contact your salesperson, and we can set that up for you. I'm going to begin here at Lyons Township High School, School District uh, 204. And one of the things that they've done is a, a staff directory. Think of the Minibase as a multi-purpose database, but it's not a full-blown database like you might have with Microsoft Access or SQL or FileMaker Pro or some of the other uh, more standalone databases that are out there. This is specifically designed for the web as a tool that allows our clients to configure it very simply. There are some you know, limitations. For example, the number of fields that are available uh, is not unlimited. There will be about uh, 15 different fields you can use. So that mini part of mini base uh, really does apply here. And there are some limitations in the number of, of records and those types of things. But for what most school districts use it for, it works very, very well. So imagine being able to create this searchable staff directory by simply uploading a spreadsheet and having each column of that spreadsheet being a field within this database. So here at Lyons Township, on one of their pages, you can see they have uh, configured and placed that mini base app onto that page. They've designated uh, five of the columns or five of the fields to be able to be uh, filtered or searched. So for example, three of them allow you to enter in your search item that you're looking for. And then two of them merely present all of the data within that particular column. So for example, if I click on department, you'll see all of these entries that would be available in that column. So I didn't have to create this dropdown. It automatically populates this with the information that is in that spreadsheet that they, they imported. In a similar way, the division, all of this information is automatically created here within this dropdown based on the content of that particular column. So for example, if I wanted to see all of the fine arts staff, I can leave all of these four fields blank and simply filter out and show only those entries in the database that have that fine arts entry. I click Submit, and the result is one of the three presentations of the, the, the result of the mini base. And this is the, that table view of that, much like a, a phone book or you know other things. You can, you can imagine how it's very simple, and this ties almost directly to that spreadsheet that they've uploaded. Uh, they have the column for last name, for first name, title, department, division. And then you can see here that they have that email address. I'm going to pause here for a second and give a, a really nice benefit to using this mini base. Because it's behind that uh, search feature or that ability for you to submit, then robots or those uh, email harvesting spiders that crawl your site looking for email addresses to send spam are not able to get to these addresses. So it's a way to protect your email addresses 
from the general populace getting to that. So mom and dad can quickly use this to find the appropriate information. They can, uh, you can certainly put in a link to that web page, and it makes it easy for mom and dad to find the information and contact those people that they need to. I'm not going to go to, uh, to uh, a lot of examples here, but I did want to show a couple others. Uh, this particular district has two mini bases. So uh, you're familiar with our app concept of placing content on the page in a very modular fashion. Well, you can put multiple instances of an app onto a page. And so here, there's actually three apps on this page. There's a content app for simply sharing the basic information about the contact information. Then below that, they have a mini base. And they've made this one a static, uh, pre-sorted information. So even though this is contained within a database, within that mini base, they can place that on the page with a pre-sorted or pre-filtered. So it automatically lists everyone in that office staff. So it's, it's already showing. The end user doesn't have to click in order to get that information. It's just instantly there. And then below that, they've placed a searchable mini base. And so here, if I wanted to go and, and filter out and see all the technology people, I can indicate that under the building, click Submit. And so the, the three apps still exist on there. But then you're seeing the results of that search shown here on that third mini base, or that third app on the page. Let's look at some other examples. Uh, here's another, uh, re the Taft Union High School District has multiple apps on that page. And again, very similar to what you've seen before. I can show all, any of these pull down lists are populated based on the content within the field. So when I'm creating this, this search field here, I don't have to enter in everyone's last name. This is pulled dynamically from that particular column of the spreadsheet. And so this allows people to, oh, I want to see all the classified staff in a particular department. So I can click on that, and that pulls that up. And then uh, one of the other fields that are available to you. you. You've seen examples of those tables. But one of the other items is a customized view of that. So here at Branson School in California, if I don't select any of these drop downs, it's going to bring back all of the results. So as I click on this submit, the results are going to be a custom view. We provide you with a simple HTML view where you can place those fields, those columns of information, in something besides a phone book looking uh, presentation. So here at Branson, they have done a custom view of their mini base. They have a link out to the, the photograph for the, for the employee. Uh, this is probably provided by their, their photography company, whether that's Jostens or you know, some of the other services, the Life Touch, something like that. Um, so they can simply upload that file into their system and probably are tying in with the person's name. So this photo is probably, um, you know, Mr. Ali.jpg or Mr. Angelo.jpg or, you know, however they want to name that. And then that's just the entry that they put into the mini base so that it pulls up and displays that from within the Centricity system. Then each item here is also a one of those uh, columns in the spreadsheet. And so one of the files is the teacher's name. Another file is, is what they teach. Uh, then with the year that they were appointed. Now, the year appointed and colon is probably something that just added in as a static text. And then this may be pulling in from that spreadsheet as simply a value in that spreadsheet. The phone number, click here to send an email, that type of p pieces of information. So doing that, you get a really attractive looking uh, dynamic kind of uh, staff directory uh, that can be, once it's all set up, can be easily managed by you know, even a, a simple high school graduate kind of clerk. It doesn't take a lot of technical expertise to keep this maintained. Okay? We'll, we'll come back to some of these in, in a minute. 
uh, a similar one, a smaller school district here in Texas, same kind of thing. Uh, but they've set that. So if you want to start, you know, find everybody whose last name starts with W, I can put that in there, and that's going to pull up any of those last names that have W, that start with W. So it gives you some of those operators where you can, um, whether he wants to start with a particular you know, set of letters or contains a certain set of letters and be able to, to find that that way. Let's look at a couple uh, outside of the box kind of thinking ways. Um, it certainly works great for those lists, like a, a database of, of directories, those types of things. But it also works very well for collecting large numbers of information that might overwhelm people if they come to your site and just see a giant page of all of the various forms that a school might provide in this particular example. So this allows me to quickly go to, well, I need to see all of the transportation forms in one place. So I can choose that, click Submit, and then in this custom view again, They've put the name of the form and information about it that helps to ex explain people you know, what it's about. They've indicated what language it's in. So uh, I could even specify whether I wanted a Spanish version of this or an English version. And then each one of these is simply an entry in that spreadsheet, the revision date, the description, you know, those types of things. And then we're filtering on the department field. Uh, another district that does a similar thing, Matsu Borough up in Alaska. Uh, again, that the presentation of it is easily manipulated, so you can have a really compelling and, and good-looking expression of that database. But as you can see here, if I wanted to pull up, you know, only parent and student forms, or you know, those types of things. Again, being able to search, and this one's a very simple expression. It just puts a link out to that PDF. So instead of just having a giant page with a thousand PDFs on it, we give them that ability to search for that and uh, narrow that search as part of that mini base. Let's change direction a little bit, and here's some some ideas that might help you uh, think outside of just a, a directory. Here at Folsom Cordova, they're using a a database or a, uh, a spreadsheet full of everybody's uh, address and uh, what school they might go to. So if we, we type in here, uh, for example, maybe we want to see anybody on Elm Street. So let's see if there's an, a street called Elm. And as I search for that, it's going to pull back any street that starts with Elm, show the starting and ending addresses in that area, and show what school that, that uh, that person would go to if they lived within this particular address and range. So there certainly are third-party tools that will do this. And in fact, they've even included that third-party tool here at the bottom, where you can click here and go out to a third-party schoollocator.com that uh, can produce that same thing. But if you're you know, short on, on cash or you need to trim things, and you can still provide that same information using a tool that is included in the website CMS that you're already using, then that might be uh, something you might want to consider. Another example of that would be out at Robinson County in, uh, is that North Carolina? Let me double check that. Yes, um, Lumberton, North Carolina. And here they've done that a similar thing, but they've broken it out into multiple uh, mini bases so that they can uh, the, the size of the file isn't quite so large. So if I'm, again, looking for that Elm Street, I'll pull up that particular list. I can um, pull up what school that I'm looking for or just type in the name of the, of the street. So we'll put in Elm and submit, and it'll pull back again that listing of all the streets, the, uh, the address, and what school they would go to and for those grades. A little different implementation, but the end result is the same. Now on this one, I will point out that they have more than a set number of responses. And so you can paginate, or you can have multiple pages of this. And it will automatically allow you then to navigate to the next page, etc. And this is all dynamically created. You don't have to worry about you know, making those 
uh, programmatic changes yourself. You can set the number of fields you want to be viewed per page, and then this will adjust and provide additional pages based on that. Thinking outside the box a little bit, Houston Independent School District here in Texas uh, is using a mini base down at the bottom of their main page to present their videos. Now they use Vimeo for all of their videos, but they wanted an attractive way to present that and make those available. And so this is a custom uh, presentation or a custom view of the mini base where they've placed you know, the multiple files in here and entries so that we can see at a glance what that uh, that file is and play it right here within the site. I'm going to turn down my sound so we don't have to listen to that. But you get that idea. So it's a, a creative way to present pretty much any kind of information. Then as I click to view all, it'll take me out to see the entire collection. In a similar way, Kansas City Public Schools does that for their video library. And this is available right off that district homepage where you can go in on their prominently pe featured on their main page is that featured video and then you can click into that video library and this is an expression of that mini base and a custom view where they have a link to the video just like you would embed a video on a page a description about that and then when it was posted so there's three simple fields in this spreadsheet that they upload and maintain and we'll show you some of those maintaining things here in just a second. Uh, let's uh, look at, again, thinking outside of the box, here at the Council of Great City Schools, they have several publications that they offer. And so they use a mini base to make those available to the public in a searchable manner. So if I want to pull up all of the professional development publications, I can put in that topic, click Submit, and you'll see that they have one instance of that. So again, a custom view of that with a picture of the publication, the title, a description, when it was issued, how many pages, that type of thing. Okay. So if I wanted to see all of those, I can leave these blank and simply click Submit. And you'll see that list, a very attractive looking uh, presentation of that information based on that custom view of the mini base. District 49 in Colorado is one of my favorite examples. Here on their home page, uh, prominently spaced right there on that main page, is a link to a digital backpack. As you know, many schools will get flyers of all kinds that get sent home in people's backpacks or in their you know, Wednesday folders or those types of things. And some of them actually make it home. But I venture to say that a good majority of those never make it to mom and dad, and so that information is lost. To, to uh, combat that a little bit, District 49 has created a digital backpack. Now, it's just a term that they coined, and they're using our mini base to create that. So once it's set up, each one of these items here is a separate record, and they're using that custom view where they scan the flyer as, as a PDF, and so they have a little thumbnail of that, a description of it, who it was submitted by with a link out to their you know, uh, company or website. Or their, and they've added a little piece of Pinterest code so that I can pin this to my Pinterest board for me to save it for later. And that's a personal expression of being able to take something from the website and pin it to your personal information. So here you can see, once this is set up, it's very simple to maintain. You can easily turn them on and off. You can uh, show certain information that's based you know, only for those people that are logged in, for example. Uh, gives you a lot of flexibility, and I thought was a unique way of using our mini base. A couple other really different ones, uh, North Slope Borough up in Alaska has our Centricity 2 calendar, and they love it. They use they sometimes will use the list view, but one of the things our calendar doesn't have is a specific calendar search. So if I wanted to search through just the calendar events, I could go to the Google search, and it'll bring up anything with that particular keyword, not just specifically our calendar events. So what they did is they took an export out of their calendar and imported that into a, a CSV file 
to create this mini base. So I can easily pull up any of those events or search for them by you know a particular event. And just to remember, this pull down is dynamically created. I don't have to build this. It's built based on the information that I'm pulling in. So if I wanted to see those state testing dates in one place, bam, there it is. So it's a, a, a again, easy way to implement, easy way to increase the usability of your site with a just a simple spreadsheet. Then the last example that I have here is from Eagle Mountain Saginaw, who struggled with our table editor. Uh, Cindy Tucker, who's the, the person in charge of that, uh, just likes to format things a certain way, and our tables were just given her fits. And so we suggested that maybe you look at using a mini base to present that tabular data. And so what you're seeing here is a, a custom view of our mini base, and this allows her to present that tabular data in a way that is uh, good looking, easy to maintain, without ever having to touch our table editor. Another example from that same school are all the sports camps. And so you can see here that it allows her to maintain that list of information in a mini base. This one, they've chosen not to make it searchable. They just display all of the records in that particular mini base. And then they stack multiple mini bases on that page so you can easily peruse through and see the information that you need on there. Again, a little different use of our mini base, but certainly uh, meets that particular need at that district. So with the last few minutes we have, I wanted to show you uh, how you approach going in to create a mini base and show you some of the really nice uh, help that we have built into the product. So to do that, uh, um, I'm, one of the demonstration mini bases I have here is uh, on my demonstration site, just a list of best practices that we have within our site. So this is our demonstration site. These are the various features. Again, because it's that pull down, I don't have to create it. It's automatically generated based on the contents of that spreadsheet. So to, to, to make changes to that, I'll log in to someone who has the rights to edit this particular section, and I'll go into Site Manager. Once I'm there, I'll go to the, the, the page that has that on there, and that's our Features and Best Practices page. And you'll see here I have a, a Flex Editor to talk about the, the particular item at the top. And then I have that mini base app, just like a map, the app that you would have on any of the pages. So to edit that, I simply click on the app, just like you would on any of those, and it's going to bring up that management interface for that mini base. And as you can see here, we have columns that are tied directly into that spreadsheet that I import, and I have that ability to go in. I can edit any entry. So here's where, once it's set up, it really doesn't take any uh, skill whatsoever. I can simply click on a particular record. You'll see each of the fields, and I can go in and make changes to that by simply typing. It's really very simple. I can you know, save my changes, and I'm ready to go. If I want to create a new record, a new line, so I'm adding a new feature here, I simply click on New Record and fill in the blanks. Now I'm going to make this really simple. I'm just going to do something that will stand out. Click Save. I can save and make a new entry. So this allows me to rapid fire, add new ones in there. Or I can save and simply exit. That's going to add it to the end of the list here. And again, it's paginated here within that. And you'll see that entry that I just added here. Now, that's instantly available on the website. So if I come back out here, uh, I'll need to refresh my page just so that it'll pull up. Now, in that pull down, I should see ASDF as an option. And there it is. And when I select that, I should get one entry with ASDF in each field. And there you go. So it's, it's very simple to, to manage, makes it very easy for you to uh, quickly have that information available. And uh, then going beyond that is where we can go in and we can change the look and feel of that. I can filter out to view these. So if I have a very large database, I can filter and, for example, only show me a particular one here in the management interface so I can manage that easily. 
I can import my files using just a simple spreadsheet. And then once it's all created, I can export it out, again, as a simple CSV spreadsheet. If I'm updating these on a regular basis, I can purge, just flush all of this information and import a new set on top of it. And then, of course, the options for this mini base is where the real magic happens. So let's go into those options and take a look real quick. You have those three formats, that table view, more like a, like a phone book kind of thing, a list view, kind of a card view with each of the fields that is automatically generated. You don't have to touch it. It just lists the name of the column and the entry or the content uh, in that particular field. But then the custom view is where most of that magic stuff that I've shown you has happened. This, when you select that custom view, that's where you get that additional capability to add uh, a custom header across the top of each record. The details, this is that the entry of that record. So this would be, for example, where District 49 put in and used just simple HTML to stack their, their fields, to uh, add a, a picture, those types of things. And then if you needed something at the bottom, you know, af after all of those are displayed, then this is where you can add that information there. So if you need help setting this up, uh, we certainly can, can sell you the development time to help you with that. Or you can uh, simply go through the, the help things that are included in the product to work through that, which is a nice segue into the How Do I tab. So as I click into that, as you know, this is all of our contextual help. And then I can click in here, simply search for Minibase, and everything that's returned is related to Minibase, including these custom tips and tricks, uh, how to, um, the Minibase workbook with information on how to get all of that information, and then uh, all of the other help articles that are available here. So in a nutshell, uh, let me double check the uh, questions that we have here. Let me see if there are any. Yes, we have several questions. So let me go through those real quick. Let me go back to our uh, question time here, and we'll go with that. All right, um, you mentioned, let me see if I can get these questions out here. Okay, you mentioned that there's a limit to the number of fields in a mini base can be populated. Uh, would you remind us of that number again, please? I believe it's 15 fields that are available. But you can search for that information in the How Do I tab to get the very uh, accurate number for that. OK, I missed the beginning. Can I have a mini base without having the start page to be a search? Absolutely. And I showed a couple examples of that. You simply take the search result URL and use that to embed on the page. And again, there's examples on the How Do, How do I tab to do that. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we're using custom successfully for directories, but where can we find specific instructions on setting up a mini base for forms and documents? It actually works the same way. You just put fields in for the description, a field for the actual URL. So if you upload that to your forms and surveys, you'll take that link to that particular document and put that into the mini base. And again, our help file can help you through much of that. Okay. Do you need a separate app under or in front of a mini base to hold explanatory or follow-up text. I've had to do that with the tables. Yes, and, and you saw that with several examples where someone will put a, a content app or a flex app at the top so that they can have that ex explanatory information than the mini base on the same page below that. Okay. A new feature of Calendar is the ability to sync with Google Calendars. Do you think that exporting events from a SchoolWires calendar that is being synced with the Google Calendar will contain some events from the Google Calendar also? I doubt it. I haven't tested that. That Google synchronization is, is fairly new. But that's something we can test and get back to you on that. Uh, can you give us a link to the Robeson County mini base, the street locator? Absolutely. I'm going to stick that in the chat. Uh, section here in just a second. Uh, and we can also then email that out to you. You can contact me at 
uh, jwindsor at schoolwires.com, and I can give you any link that I've shown you today. What is the date format as it resides, as it relates to the Numinibase app and ordering? I believe you can set that, but again, that information will be available in the How Do I tab. Is there any way to add protected documents to a mini base? Is there a way to add documents to a file upload app? Can this feature be integrated into the mini base? One of the key features of the mini base is the ability to show or hide content, any of those fields, based on your login. So for example, that staff directory example, the general public might see the person's uh, name, title, and where they teach. But then once you log in as a principal with the appropriate rights, you'd be able to see their personal cell phone number, for example. So that might be a way to uh, protect those documents where they're only available if you log in with the rights to see those documents. Okay. Any other questions? I know we've gone over a little bit, and I, I get long-winded when I talk about these things, so I apologize for that. Last call. All right, if, if you have additional information or con questions, you can certainly uh, uh, email out to us, and we'll be happy to answer those. Um, our, our time together has come to a close. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, keep an, out, an eye out for our email with the webinar recording. Uh, in the meantime, to learn more about Minibases or to request more in-depth training, check out the resources on the screen. Enjoy the rest of your day.